Okay, we're going live now, sir. I'm just waiting the notification. There we go. Okay, boom. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this afternoon. We have an incredible guest with us today, one who's going to give us some amazing information as well as inspiration. And that is none other than student minister Roland Muhammad out of Cleveland, Ohio. Asalaamu Alaikum, sir. Walaikum, well, well, brother. How you doing? Yes, sir. I'm doing great, sir. How are you? How are you and the family? Oh, I'm doing well. My family's doing well. I'm doing quite well. Thanks to Allah, the originator, the uh, Master Farah Muhammad, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and the Honorable Miss Louis Farrakhan. All oh, praises due to Allah. Yes, sir. Well, speaking of, speaking of those three great men, when was the first time you heard the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Uh, the first time I heard the teaching was in 1970 uh, mm -hmm. in Cleveland, Ohio, at Moss number 18 under the minister Theodore Hamza. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And what, what was he like as, as, as a minister? Well, he was a great minister. He was a great educator and teacher as well. He was a great businessman because uh, in Cleveland, we had a large FOI, approximately 500 on the books. And we had a community of Muslim businesses on Superior Avenue that stretched from 105 until 125th on Superior. Mm, okay, great. Yes, sir. And I've, I've heard a lot of people, um, a lot of believers who I've interviewed from the Ohio and Midwest area speak very highly of him. All praises yes, to sir. Allah. Yes, sir. Okay, great. And uh, both of my sisters in the greetings, Miriam and Ayman, Assalamu alaikum, wa alaikum salam. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. So once you accepted the teachings, I mean, once you heard the teachings, what was it about them that made you accept them, sir? Well, I'm from South Carolina, Florence, South Carolina. And of course, that's where I grew up there. Uh, born in uh, 1944, and I experienced all the racism and uh, and, and and the deeds of the white men. So uh, when I uh, joined the military, joined the Air Force after graduating from high school, and then uh, of course I witnessed him and his behavior there, and I met all brothers from all around the country, and uh, one. Okay, all right. As I got into uh, uh, learning from them, then of course, when I uh, moved to Cleveland after I came out of the Air Force, then uh, I went to the mosque and when Minister Theodore started talking, everything he said was relative to my own thinking and my own experience. So I was impressed by that. And of course, I grew up in the cotton fields and the backer fields in South Carolina and worked most of my life from a real early age, in fact, in fact, as a child, earning money. And so when uh, I saw the productivity and the work of the uh, Moss 18, and also took a view of the work of Beyond Belaji Muhammad uh, for the nation as a whole, I was highly impressed with that. Beautiful. All praise due to Allah. Yes, sir. And, and, and uh, how did your family and friends feel about you accepting the teaching, sir? Well, well uh, I was in Cleveland, I was primarily in Cleveland by myself because when I came out of the Air Force, I came to Cleveland at the request of a friend and I was here virtually by myself. I didn't have any family and I only got, I got married years later. So I was a single individual. And so therefore I didn't have to deal with anyone that's accepting, uh, either respecting me, whether I accept by accepting Islam, I didn't have any kind of like opposition uh, in a rejection on that behalf. Mm, okay, great. Yes, sir. I'll praise you to a lot. And and now this is 1970 leading up to 1975. What was it like for you to be under the voice of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad? So did you ever get to go to Savior's Day? Did you ever get to see him speak live? Yes, of course. <laughs> it was the Savior's Day, uh, 73, 72, 73, and 74. Mm. Uh, it was great always to see the Ambalaj Muhammad and uh, to hear him speak. And then most important was to read his books. All his books was out at that particular time. You know, Mr. The Black Man, Fall of America, Our Savior has arrived and How Did to Live, book one and two. So it was always a blessing to read his writing and also read what he wrote in the Muhammad speak. In fact, I was so excited 
about his writing that when I first entered the nation, I went by a brother house and he had a lot of papers in the basement. And I must have took about 200 copies, individual copies. And I took them to my apartment and over six minute period of time, I read all his work, all the works throughout the book from cover to message, meaning Muhammad speak from cover to cover. So I, through my reading and studying uh, what was written in Muhammad speak gave me a great insight and in what the Ambalajim was doing. And I wanted to be a part of that. Also, we had uh, on the Sunday, Sunday radio show program, the minister was Yes, sir, right. yes, sir, we're right here with you, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir, you, you said you said also on, on a program and then it went out. Oh, right. well, Mr. Farrakhan will come on the radio every Sunday around 11 o'clock. Mm. And uh, we were always, I would always listen to Mr. Uh, program coming out of New York City, mm. you know. Mm. And, uh, you know, when I had a mixture of theater, Mr. Theodore Hamza, the Honorable Mr. Lewis Farrakhan and reading the mom and speaks and all those books that were produced uh, uh, by the nation from the Ambalaji Muhammad, that's what inspired me. And that was my greatest desire, my greatest hope, my greatest inspiration and my greatest motivation because was in line with my very nature and the things that I was doing and things I really talked about. And I love the idea of nation of Islam and I want to be a part of the nation of Islam. Okay, due to a lot. Yes, sir. And on, and on behalf of myself, my family, and the viewing audience of the People's Podcast, we want to thank you for your sacrifice, sir, and the sacrifices of your family to help establish Islam here in North America, specifically in Cleveland, Ohio, and throughout the nation. We thank you very much, sir, and we salute you for the work that you put in in helping to establish Islam here in North America. Yes, sir. I want to thank you as well for what you're doing, my brother, as well as what you and your, your mother and father have done as well. Oh, praise you. Yes, sir. Okay, my next question for you is, what was it like when you heard on uh, February 1975, the Muslim Elijah Muhammad departs, and how did that personally affect you because you were there? Well, well that was a devastating experience to hear that the Muhammad Elijah Muhammad had, uh, had left us. Uh, the, the, I read so much about him and what the, when what he wrote. I had the expectation that the Ambalaj Muhammad would be back in three years, mm -hmm. and so like it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't so much hurting. You know, I mean, it was all about fulfilling prophecy because, uh, by as my reading, all these things that the Ambalaj Muhammad talked about uh, came to pass, and uh, I read about it. You know, in the Muhammad speaks and all of his lectures. He talked about that, the theology of time and all that. So we were aware that, I, in fact, I was aware that this would probably happen, but I was having the hope that he would come back in and, uh, and three, return back in three years. And also the, the hope that Minister Louis Farrakhan would take over the Nation of Islam. That was the disappointment there because of what happened with the nation. So that was a disappointment. Yes, sir. And what was it about the minister in New York, like hearing him on the radio, you just thought he could be next up he, just from hearing his broadcast? Well, yeah, yeah, oh, hearing the broadcast uh, and also hearing the broadcast and then his his commitment, right? His dedication and his study that uh, from his study, when he spoke, he spoke with such inspiration, such power, you know, explaining who the Amba Elijah Muhammad and giving us a vivid understanding of who the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was. So I was into him uh, really in a sense more deeply than I was into Minister Theodore X, uh, Theodore Hamza. So, so in a sense that when the minister spoke, you, you, you almost like heard the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Through the minister, you felt the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and you felt the prophecy that was being uh, predicted that would happen as a result of uh, the work that the Ambalaji Muhammad was doing. So, you know, that was always in my spirit. And uh, I admired the minister for that, what he was doing. And because I did that, that kind of got in a little trouble a little bit <laughs> because of that issue. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Well, man, all praise to a lot that you had the foresight to see into that. Um, what what made you the, the nation falls? What what was it? When did you come and help to rebuild the nation? Well, when the nation when the nation fell, I, I waited around doing my studies, maintaining my discipline, maintaining my faith and hope in the Elijah Muhammad, and that at some point after three years, the minister would return. Well, after the minister returned, then I went out to California, three, stayed three years from 75 to 78, and I came back to Cleveland in 78, and mm -hmm. then, and, uh, then uh, got a job with the Coca-Cola Bottling Company, and, uh, and a year and a half later, a brother told me that the minister had returned and was bringing a teacher, and I said, oh, God, and I was excited. So all my material that I had, I had it stored in this, uh, at this brother's house, I went and got uh, this footlocker full of all the books, the Muhammad speak. And I got back on my dean, reading the books again, doing all this right here, and then doing all of that. And then uh, uh, we heard that the first Savers Day would be in, in, in Chicago in February 80, 81. Mm. So I immediately went to Chicago and signed up to, uh, to, uh, to uh, start the, uh, the nation in Cleveland. All praise to you too, Allah. Yes, sir. And, and were you the first minister, like, in the rebuilding? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, uh, Brother Kareem came down. There was there was 11 choices that he had to interview, interview that said they wanted to be uh, the, the, uh, the, the coordinator in, city, in, in Cleveland. So Minister Kareem came down along with the FOI from, uh, from uh, Columbus, Ohio. And we met at my home. By that time, I'd gotten married. And we met at my home. And, Mr. and Brother Kareem went through the process of uh, interviewing everybody. And so you interview out of the 11, seven was chosen, seven was, was selected uh, to uh, be, go through the second interview. And we, and we went through the second interview, then there was only three left, myself and two other brothers, because he asked the seven, were they willing to, and he had chose me, excuse me, and uh, he asked the seven that they were willing to help me. And four of them said no, so that left us with three. About two weeks later, uh, two weeks later, as we organized to start teaching on Sunday, because we had the message of the black man, we would teach from the blessed man, message of the black man section by section. And so at the end of three weeks, then I was left by myself, me and my wife. Yes, sir, my goodness. Yes, sir, strong, rather strong. Yes, sir, that you stayed. Yeah. Persistent, all praise due to a lot. Uh, yes, sir. Well, how how were you able to um, get the economics up in Cleveland? I always heard about the your business acumen and the business acumen of the believers in Cleveland. Well, I was highly well. I was always highly impressed with business and economics. That seemed to be my forte and my calling. So uh, I was able to after me, my wife and I was the only one, and we were trying to invite. Uh, others to come out to the house so we could do the study. Then a brother showed up, Brother Roosevelt, Roosevelt uh, Muhammad. He came from uh, the University of Cincinnati and he said that he would help me, you know? So him and I started. And so uh, how, the, how the process really began was that he got several of his friends and I had an advantage uh, over the average minister who stars a study group. I mean, I had a job of working at Coca-Cola Bottle Cup that was making quite a bit of money and I had an extra car. So I was able to take my money and help finance the two brothers and give them the car. I added to four more brothers. And so we had two more brothers, there was four brothers. So I was like helping them. And at one point I told them, look, I'm tired of helping y'all. Y'all got to find something to do and to make money. And so they went to Mr. Theodore Hamza Bakery they started buying old baked goods and they was, you know, they old baked goods and they started selling that. They were doing so well doing that, that the Minister Theodore Bakery went up on the prices and all of a sudden they would claim they didn't have any more. So the idea was, well, we need our own bakery. And since I had money, what I decided to do was buy all the equipment and cause we had had this building, we had ended up with a building and the building it has a basement, had a main floor, which we had set up at the mosque, had a second floor with three bedrooms with a kitchen and had an attic, a full attic that was refurbished 
Yeah, and it had about four locations where brothers could stay on the base up in the attic. And so therefore the four brothers had a car, they had a building they could stay in, and uh, and they had me with the money to finance the bakery. So once I brought the equipment, once I would get off in the afternoon at four o'clock, I would come to the kitchen and in the basement and experiment on cooking baked goods. You know, we try to get help. No one to help us. They always tell us to seek refuge in our law. And so eventually, over the period of time, we was able to produce the bean pie. Then we got the carrot cake. And then we got the uh, pound cake. And then we do lemon cake, the yellow cake. And then, uh, and then the, the good part about that, whatever I bake. Okay. Uh, every day. And then I would get off the roster on Sunday and go in the bakery in the basement and cook for the brothers, bake for the brothers on uh on uh on uh on for Monday. Mm -hmm. And we did so well, we did so well with the bakery was that uh I had documented everything and the minister had a a, a minister conference in Phoenix, Arizona. I took all the information to the minister, showed them all the documentation and showed them the money that we made. And I asked the minister, could I quit my job? And the minister said, yes, brother, go ahead on. And so as a result, given the business uh, 24 hours, seven days a week, then we was able to explode, move further and uh, was able to do more. And then uh, after about, about, about uh, from in 86, we had made so much money that we had money to open up the Blue Sea Fish House and Bakery. Mm. Open the bakery, then I was able to employ a lot of brothers. I was able to employ all the young sisters. They had jobs in the in the uh, in the uh, in the bakery and the restaurant. And then we was able to take the money that we earned from the restaurant and buy the building on Kinsman, the mosque, that fine mosque that we had. We was able to take the money and buy that, and from there. We went from there and bought a security company and the brothers, we had jobs for all the brothers uh, and the sisters to work in, the, in, 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 in Cleveland. And so that was the road that we took, you know, using the money, using my commitment, dedication and helping the brothers and sisters. My role wasn't so much a minister. My role was mostly a father figure. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't play the role so much as a minister. I was like a dad helping them out, showing them how to do the math, showing them how to do certain things, showing them the work ethics and all that, all that. And as a result, uh, they, uh, they, uh, was, they was attracted to that, they became motivated for that and they got inspired. So they joined in me in building uh, uh, Cleveland, in the city of Cleveland. Great, it's all uh, beautiful, yes sir. That's motivational, that's motivation for sure, yes sir. Yeah. 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 And yeah. people are showing you love all across the country. And I can't wait to put this on YouTube as well. Please let us know once we put it on YouTube, what city you all are watching from as we continue to show love to uh, our, our brother, Minister Roland Muhammad out of Cleveland, yeah. Ohio. Yeah. Yes, sir. And I was going to ask you, as far as you meeting with the minister and the minister's meeting in Phoenix and things of that nature, what were some of the things that the minister told you in the early days that um, that we can use now as far as advice and inspiration and things like that? But what, what the things, one of the best things the minister noticed about me, he noticed I was a hard worker. And one of the things that he told me, uh, Brother Roland, they can't do what you do. You just lead by example. And so I led by example and I gave them the opportunity to express what they wanted to do. And if we could fund it, then we would, be, we would fund anything that they wanted to do. I was available all the time, 24 hours, seven days a week. They knew where I was at all the time. And anyone could, could talk to me, but you have to come talk to me while, while I work. And so that's my signature. You can talk to the minister anytime, you can get with him anytime, but you got to do work, we talk with him when he worked. And so that's my signature. And at, at the same time, uh, 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 the minister had advised me uh, to you know, make sure they study. And they read, and one of the problems, or one of the things that we set in Cleveland, that you got, you got to read all the material. You have yes, to sir. read. 
You have to read your final call. You know I mean, you can't sell it. You got to not read it. You got to read the final call. You got to read Mr. Black Man. You got to read all the material. You got to read everything that the minister put on. So our focus is most reading. Then we start having a marital problem. We had a reading class. When they start having marital problems, we start reading all the books on marriage. You know, mm -hmm. everything that dealt with marriage, dealt with problems of a male-female relationship, we had that. Then we set up also a business class after the mass on Sunday that we can start learning about business. And so uh, as a result of that, some of the brothers that were doing quite well, they set up a business. My wife, she had extra business. And then in the Longwood shopping plaza that we had where the Blue Seas Bakery was, the owner, which is an Italian guy, allowed me to be the manager of the bakery and I mean, uh, the, the plaza. And so in the plaza, we set up a barber shop, beauty salon, we set up, uh, 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 brother had uh, also had a fitness center, we had a flower shop and we had an herb store. So all these particular businesses, all these business, uh, the, uh, business that we had, that's what caused us really to excel. And that's the example that the minister wanted me to uh, show the believers that whatever the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has shown us and whatever the minister did in, in New York City with his mom, number seven with 21 business, you know, uh, in, in Moss number seven, what we were trying to do is do the same thing. And also I recognize the fact that uh, in order for me to be somebody of significance in Cleveland, I had to either equal to or do greater than what Minister Theodore did. And so that was my attempt. I mean, not competition in a sense, but try to take the believers with the few we had and make a difference so that people can recognize that we had the same capabilities as Minister Theodore X. Beautiful. All praises due to her life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's wonderful, sir. And, and, I, and I'm glad to hear, it's always good to hear the business, the accomplishments of the believers individually, but specifically collectively. So thank you all for uh, putting it down and showing us, uh, giving us an example um, of how business is supposed to be done. Wonderful. And speaking of businesses, uh, sir, we have a quick 60 second commercial break for, yes, all of, yes. for all of the sponsors of the People's Podcast this this month. I want to thank, uh, here we go. All right, there we go. Let me pull it up. Yes, sir, of, the, of all of the sponsors this month, we have um, great sponsorships every month. And we thank Allah for all of the people, all of the people from Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, Instagram, Anonymous, uh, every, uh, every cash app matters. Uh, please cash at the People's Podcast is greatly appreciated. My brother Rashad, Street Premier Media Production. He has a 4K camera and a drone. He does television and film editing. My sister Miriam, ABC I Love Me Children's Book, Coloring Book, and Spanish Book, all three available on Amazon. Please go and get those. My sister Naima, Stay On Point Dance Academy, LLC. She teaches ballet virtually to young girls across the country, right here in the studio in Atlanta, Georgia. We love our tiny dancers. Rock Communications, if you're working on a book, and you need copy editing, project management, content development, please reach out to Rock Communications, Fashion Gods, Urban Streetwear, 314-329-6009. He'll keep you dripping in the best of fashion. Student Minister Robert L. Muhammad out of Austin, Texas. Conflict Mediation, Squashing the Beef. He does a phenomenal job. His wife, Sister Fudia Muhammad, Children of the Most High, giving birth to a God, the science of child rearing. Brother Kenneth, Bowtie Maker Extraordinaire. He'll ship bow ties to you anywhere in the nation. Dr. Henry M. Carter, Ken Henry's Turkey Legs, right here in Atlanta, Georgia, for the Rashad Muhammad COVID-19 Disinfecting Cleaning Services out of Chicago, my father's book, A Soldier in the Movement of Christ, abdulsharif.com, and last but not least, my two books, Cleopatra, which is a children's book, and No Father, No Excuse, uh, all of which are available on Amazon. Thank you all very much. Right back to our brother, our Minister Roland Muhammad out of Cleveland, Ohio. Yes, sir. Okay, so my next question for you, sir, is, in your time uh, in life, have you ever faced, have you ever been faced with fear? And if so, how did you overcome that fear? Well, the only fear that I was experienced was mostly down south mm -hmm. uh, uh, because of the uh, the uh, the racism that exists. But when I came into teaching and then it went in the military, in the coast of military, it teaches in such a way that you, you know, you can, uh, uh, you have to rid yourself of fear. So when I came in the nation of Islam and I heard the teaching of Elijah Muhammad, and when it came to FOI, being what a truly FOI should be and should and is, 
then, of course, the boldness of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the boldness of the Honorable Minister Saru Farrakhan for fear, fear to be out of me. The, the, the whole reality of it is that when you read uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad writing and you hear what he has to say, here's a man speaking with freedom, justice, and equality, a man speaking the word of God with no fear and no doubt. You hear this, all right? Then when the minister comes back and you hear him speaking, you hear the same thing. And so therefore, if I'm studying their word and I'm studying them as a human being, then of course, you understand, I take on the likeness of them. So I really never got involved in any fear to the extent, any extent. And of course, doubt. They remove doubt from you as a person because they take you straight to God. The Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, take you straight so you can see God and through God, then fear then that you may have is removed. So yes, sir. We, don't have, uh, we don't have in the teaching, all that's removed, fear and doubt. If you're really in the true study of it, if you're really in watching the minister, if you really watch the Ambalaj Muhammad as human beings, you know, we have to study the, his word, but we have to watch the individual. And when you're watching them and study them, then of course you understand we will become like them because in reading the minister word, you actually in conversation with the minister and the minister give you so much wisdom, so much advice, so much information that it is incredible. When you're reading the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, it gives you so much information, it goes so much knowledge. And that's why it's important that the brothers and sisters must read. They must read to try to understand what the minister is actually saying. Then that is something you can ponder over and thoughts through the will of God, thoughts and ideas will come up in your mind and give you the ability to succeed in your life. Beautiful teaching, excellent. Yes, sir, yes, sir. And people are showing you love all across the country. My sister Miriam says, yes, sir, as well. Can't wait to put this on YouTube uh, once again. My next question is, what was the climate like during the Million Man March in Cleveland? And how did the Million Man March personally impact you, sir? Oh, the, oh, the idea was, uh, was exciting. Uh, of course, you know, when the minister would start anything, he would invite all of us as young ministers up to Chicago and he will come, he will uh, come and uh, tell us his dream, his vision, what he wanted to do. And in fact, the minister was so humble, he always get our permission to mm. do what he wanted to do. He didn't just arbitrarily do anything. In mm. the early days when we worked with the minister, you know, he was just a gracious, honorable, loving human being, you understand, took time and patience out to give us all the things that we needed as young ministers, helping them out. And so like, uh, so like uh, when the minister said it, immediately, we took on the spirit of the minister and said, yes, sir. And so we immediately, some of us gave donation right away when we was at the meeting, but the minister gets started. And so I came back to Cleveland always because when I go hear the minister, I'm listening at him carefully because in his message is always instruction for you to do when you go back to your city. I yes, always instructed the brothers and sisters, when we do go to Chicago, ground the minister, listen carefully so that we can find out any information that he's given us that we can use in our city. So we will come back and we will have a discussion on what we heard from the minister and what he, we thought he wanted us to do. And then when we heard that, we get busy and go to work. And so when, a, when the minister said that, we was excited, got busy and went to work. And I think we got about six buses coming out of Cleveland. And, and then being the businessman we did, we, we are, we went to Sam Club, we got a booth, went to Sam Club, loaded up this van and took it to the Million Man March and we were busy, you know, you know, sell it. You know, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Brother, along with myself and the brother. So we got engaged in the operation of selling what we had brought up there to uh, present. Beautiful, all oh, praises to Allah, excellent, yes, sir. Okay, my next question for you, sir. Uh, what has been your greatest trial in life and how have you been able to overcome that trial? Well, well, my greatest trial has been the ability to sustain myself during the time that the envelope left us, up in the time I, uh, I, I rejoined with the minister in 81. Mm -hmm. right? The next greatest trial was some of the things that I had to deal with in uh, March 18, and my, uh, I had to step down in 1997, uh, mm -hmm. November, and then the, uh, the ability to sustain myself, you know, until this present moment. So it's been 25 years and the trial has been 
to to uh, sustain myself and maintain myself as an individual, hold on to the teachings of uh, Elijah Muhammad, hold on to Master Prophet Muhammad, hold on to uh, the Honorable Minister Luther Farrakhan, and be consistent in supporting him this whole 25 years and never, you know, speak against him, never turn hypocrite to, to, uh, against him, they never do anything against, but to honor him and respect him and use what I know at all times to teach people about the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and support the nation of Islam. Beautiful, yes, sir. And what has been your greatest joy, sir? My greatest joy is always supporting the nation of Islam and and reading the uh, reading the uh, the words of the Minister Louis Farrakhan. Mm -hmm. And right now I'm heavily into Mother Teddy Muhammad, I'm heavily in Brother Jabril, and I'm heavily in reading Sister Ava Muhammad. So when I'm coupled with that, that's the greatest of joy because my life and sacrifices is all for Allah. Death is all sacrifice is death for all Allah. And in order for me to do that, I have to thoroughly understand his words. And so the, uh, along with the minister, along with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and what Master Prophet Muhammad has given us, and and what the creator originator has will, you get a better understanding when you get the views of those in the nation who come and support the minister Farrakhan and what he's doing. Also, you do a great work too, brother, because what you do, you interview all everybody throughout the nation, get views and opinions from everybody. So we get a, a universal view from the concept of what the nation teaches us from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and now Ms. Louis Farrakhan in the hearts and minds of the of the uh, of the people that you interview. So in my judgment, you you do a great job. And it's all like remind me, I don't want to classify you with them, but you remind me of Larry King, who bring views to the nation. <laughs> yes, you remind me of Charlie Rose, Barbara Walter, Diane Sawyer. You remind me of those people because those people bring views of the Caucasian to the Caucasian people, to the American people to see what they're thinking and what God has given them to advance their nation. You know, yes, sir. And, and their opinion, whether it's pro or con. You do the same thing. And so God has blessed you with that. And I enjoy that so much because the fact is that we all, one person don't know everything. And so God, so the bodies of God is a collective body and he gives part to this individual, give part to that individual. And so therefore, when we come in a collective way, we are able to understand. So that's my greatest joy is to understand that and to grow and develop, you understand, at a point, you understand, I can be the best helper to the Honorable Miss Louis Farrakhan, to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Master Farah Muhammad and do the will of the originator of the heaven and earth. All oh, praise due to my excellent teaching. Yes, sir. And thank you very much, sir, for your kind words. My sister Miriam says, all praise you to Allah, young Larry King. And thank you as well, again, for teaching, Brother Minister. My next question is, you spoke about your wife being with you when no one else was, when you were first Not starting out. How, how important has the role of your wife been with you and your success and development as a man? Well, on both ends, you know, I got divorced. Uh, the, 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 my first wife helped me in the struggle when no one was was there. So there was a a lot that I uh, that that helped me develop as a as a man yes, and doing the work because she assisted me in many ways. But my greatest help came from my present wife mm. because uh, I had a dilemma in the mosque. I mean, I had the ability to put the brothers together, you know, help make them men and teach the young brothers on the rules and conduct, the code of ethics, you know, the values and the discipline in the nation. Yes, but I had no one to really get the sisters together. Mm -hmm. and, so, uh, and so my present wife, she came in and uh, and adopted the same principle that I did in course studying and learning. And when she learned uh, uh, the teachings, she began to use that. And she had a class and a style that uh, an appearance that was attractive to sisters. And of course, she used that knowledge and was able to put the sisters together and they created a group within the sisterhood called the Queens of Islam. And we, for our first time, we had a sister drill team in Moss 18. And then she was the one that was the manager over the security, 19 security company we had. So in that sense, she helped me develop the sisterhood in the mosque, and she helped me further advance another business where the brothers could come and sell 
and make money from selling security system to home throughout the city of Cleveland. Mm, all praise due to a lot. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, Brother Minister, what type of music do you like to listen to? Well, I, 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 follow, I follow the minister. You know, I was on there. Uh, I, I, when uh, when uh, we lost uh, during that uh, time, the early part of after 1997, after I had to leave the mosque, uh, uh, step down. Uh, of course, I didn't have the support of the mosque and support of the brotherhoods in many ways. So a lot of the business that we had since I had the people kind of like folded. And so at one point, then I had to go uh, and drive uh, uh, a, a drive uh, on the expedite service. And I used the van. I used the, I used the van uh, to, uh, to drive expedite uh, uh, to to make money and for myself. And uh, and so. Uh, during that period, you know, that was my greatest struggle trying to get that done. And then, of course, then I came back to bacon. And once I came back to bacon, then everything returned once again. Wonderful. Yes, sir. And will you ever write a book about your personal life, sir? No, I haven't done that, but I got some people that uh, attempt to do some things about, you know, tell, talk about my, my personal life. I really don't talk about myself too much. I find most of the time I'm talking about the Army, Miss Lewis Farrakhan, uh, talking about the Army, Elijah Muhammad, uh, talking about uh, Mother Tanetta, Brother Jabril, or Sister Ava. Beautiful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, what do you want your legacy to be, sir? Oh, I want, uh, yes, sir. I want my legacy to be a hard worker, one who joined the Nation of Islam with the concept and idea uh, to help the Army, Elijah Muhammad, and to help the Army, Miss Lewis Farrakhan and manifest the will of Master Prophet Muhammad through the originator that he came to North America to do. And that's my legacy that I want to bring forth that Brother Rose Muhammad, you understand, was one who tried his best to understand uh, the mission, the real purpose of the nation of Islam, uh, to build the nation of Islam, to have a nation of our own, to have a land of our own where we can exercise our own ability to provide for ourselves, you know, food, yes, clothes, sir. shelter, to everything, the health and technology and the blueprint of the Amr Elijah Muhammad. You know, that is my greatest desire to see that manifest that we can have a, a nation so all our, all of everybody within our nation can participate. And when you got a nation of your own, then your realization as a human being is made manifest. And we can't do that in America under the under, under the, the white man's civilization and rule, we cannot do that, you know what I mean? Because we are secondary class citizens, but we have a nation of our own, our own land and a country of our own, our own army, our own Navy, our own Air Force, or whatever it may be, all the business that is used to produce a nation. And we have a land that we can grow everything, get everything for land as far as food, clothing, and the shelter. And then we use the technology to advance that, we use the food to help ourselves and all these different things, then that's what I want to see because that's what we have. That's what God brought us. And then in that, we can see our true nature in which God has created to be. In the situation we are right now, we can't treat our true self because we don't have the means by which we can exercise ourselves in the environment that we can produce our true self. Mm. Excellent. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Excellent. And what a legacy that is. And people are showing you love all across the country. Um, I want to thank you once again, Reverend Minister Rosa Muhammad of Cleveland, uh, Mosque number 18. Um, and thank you all for watching. Uh, and once we put this on YouTube, a lot of people are going to uh, tune in to hear you, sir. May Allah continue to bless you, your family, and the believers. I uh, thank you to the brother who helped us uh, connect with the, um, with the with this interview. Thank you for your uh, assistance as well. Brother, sir. That's Brother Jaleel. Brother Jaleel, one of my brother strong Jaleel. soldiers. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, Brother that's Jaleel, for assisting. the process. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Brother Jaleel. And thank you again, Brother Minister. Uh, this is Joshua Leonard Muhammad signing off for the People's Podcast. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum.